Hi folks, John with the Wingman 115 channel. Thank you so much for checking in. A while back, if you follow along on the channel, you know that I went to SHOT Show. And the main mission of going to SHOT Show for me this year was just to find interesting folks, uh, innovative products, and just small upstart, made in America companies that had a story to tell. Well, I was introduced to the folks over at First Edge. And if you're not familiar with First Edge, that name is going to be a household name real soon. The folks at First Edge started out, they're making knives for special operations, Navy SEALs and such, and they're making this, the 50-50 survival knife. I went over to their booth, I talked to the CEO, Mr. Sieber, had a great story to tell. I was really intrigued and interested in their story about their company and what they do. He noticed that I'm from San Diego and their company happens to be in San Diego. So Mr. Sieber invited me up to their corporate headquarters to have a tour of their factory and to show you folks the process of how they make these blades. Now, because of the unique deal that they have with special operations, I can't show the whole process of everything that goes into this blade, but we sat down, we had a talk with Mr. Sieber and some of the folks that work over there in their manufacturing facility. They showed me what they could for obvious reasons and uh, they're gonna let me test this knife for you folks. Now, this video is not a knife review. This is just to get this product out in front of you so you can see it, see the process of how it's made, all the labor of love that goes into making this blade. And then over the next few weeks, what I'll do is I'm going to be doing some extensive testing on this blade so I can make a kick-ass video to showcase for you folks the capabilities of the 5050 survival knife. Now, we're not going to be doing like normal testing. There'll be a little bit of wood stuff, but we're going to try to think outside the box. So if you have any ideas of how you would like to see this knife tested and reviewed since it's a special operations blade, please leave it in the comments below. Let's be realistic, I'm on a limited budget here on YouTube, so let's not go too crazy town. But if we can make it happen, we'll do that. So, without further ado, let's cut away. Let's take that factory tour. Hi, this is John with the Wingman 115 channel. I'm up here at the First Edge Knife Factory. I'm with Mr. Brett Sieber. We met at SHOT Show and like my SHOT Show coverage, I'm always looking for unique outside the box items that are made right here in the USA. Mr. Sieber has a company that he runs that does just that. Mr. Sieber, thank you for having me up here. My pleasure. Can you describe a little bit your knives and what you guys do here at uh, First Edge? Uh, these knives were originally designed with and for Special Forces. Okay. Uh, right now it's currently in several kits for training and also for combat. Uh, this particular knife is used a lot up in uh, Kodiak uh, for survival schools. Uh, we make all the knives here. We do all the grinding. I think uh, Wes is gonna give you a tour on yes. the CNC grinders. Yeah. Uh, can we talk about some of the process in regards to uh, the demands that Special Forces the needs and why they would need a blade that's just as stout as a blade like this. We sat down with them to get a features and benefits uh, criteria that okay. they needed. And it became very clear that they needed uh, some of the best steel that we could get. And uh, they needed something that was obviously corrosion resistance that they could use as a pry bar that has excellent edge retention. And so we met with uh, the Udalhome folks and uh, determined that LMAX was probably the best solution all around for the purpose of these knives. Now, LMAX is a mixed steel, and uh, some of the qualities of that are obviously durability, the strength issues, right, because it's a higher RC rating. Um, can you explain a little bit of why we went with the grind that you went and uh, just a little bit of the thought process in the design of itself, what, how it came about the, the design that you use? Well, there, there's really two types of grinding that's done on a uh, production basis. It's a hollow grind 
where you have two wheels coming in and giving you a hollow. Then you have a flat grind, which literally, if you take something flat and put in, it leaves more steel. So it's really a much stronger grind than a traditional hollow grind. The downside from a factory standpoint is you have to run it twice versus a hollow grind, it's one pass. With a flat grinder, you have to do a right and a left. Cool. Well, we'll cut away to Wes. We'll do the factory process and we'll be taking one of these blades out in the field, do a real world test on this, and we'll be coming back and reporting to you folks uh, the end result. Double disking, and uh, what we do is we take it down to the final dimension after deep creep. So we have this jig, take it in there, and then you run it back and forth. Let me try to cool it off. What I'm doing is I'm taking off about a couple thousandths at a time with this wheel turning. I have an indicator here and I measure it that way. Uh, taking it down to the sides here. All right, on this machine, it's a CNC flat grinder, and what it does is grinds this bevel. So we're going to start here. So this is the first, the first grind. Side. Then we take the knife blade out of that machine and put it over here. Okay, let's go over this. To grind to the second side. Cool. Now, how many passes do, does that have to take to bring that down to your final angle that you guys We, we do uh, four passes. So now after the blades come out of uh, being milled for the proper angle of the grind, here's uh, what it looks like when it, both sides have been uh, milled out. Yes, both sides are flat ground. So after this, then it will go into the tumbler machines and tumble out all the final ed uh, the rough the sharp edges then it'll go to the other treatment for black oxide now here's a piece of g10 that uh, they use to mill all their scales out on their blade and they'll put this stock in a cnc machine and it will cut out the scales to the size that they need for the blades that they're going to make so this plate blade at the top is it just came out of heat treat it's been rough ground CNC the profile and the holes. We then come in and do a finish double disc grind to get it down to thickness, take off about 15 thousandths for a clean finish. Then from double disc, it goes to the flat grinders 
and from the flat grinders they get tumbled and then they get blackened, assembled, and edged. Now one of the unique features is the sheath on this knife. Now with special forces and the operators out there, they're like crazy gorillas, right? They're tearing stuff up. And uh, First Edge has a solution to that problem. Mr. Sieber, can you explain a little bit the process that goes into this sheath, which is a little bit different than your normal consumer sheath that's out there? Yes, the Special Forces had a, uh, a bit of a, a dilemma on their hands in extreme Arctic conditions. The uh, Kydex and ABS, some of the other sheath materials that were being used, they were experiencing failure where the uh, sheath was actually breaking in two. So the operators would actually have the knife strapped to them and end up with a raw blade against their leg. Oh, wow. You could imagine the angst that that created. Yeah, that's not good. So we, we, the solution we came up with uh, for that was to actually create a trilaminate and there's a 300 series stainless steel band that literally comes down and wraps all the way around. So the Pydex at that point then becomes just basically a dust cover. Okay. So we took and went a little step further. We CNC'd the female uh, on a, a, a Swiss screw machine, female fasteners out of 300 series and we made this a uh, take apart. Nice. Uh, they, so they can service it. It's got a drain hole, obviously, for the bottom, but they can move the attachment points where they want it, depending okay. on where they are. And they can also remove this, have the knife upside down wherever they want. Uh, we also make this in different heights for them so that they can vary the, the wearing on their belt. So how you like to carry it, whether it's high or dangler style? Or, or low, exactly. Cool. Uh, made this where it's a three and a half inch opening for all utility gear. Uh, we also, this particular material that we're using is used for lifting straps and toe straps and alike. So it's uh, not your everyday Joe consumer nylon. This is the real. The real deal. Uh, this box X is the same uh, thread thickness and pattern that's used to hold the toe hooks. Okay. So that it, we also took it a little step further. We, we also, they, they were having an issue with, they were going from a two inch webbing to a wide, and they were using like a rubber or composite material. That was breaking as well. Um, they were only using a two fastening system, so we went to four. And so you've got the stainless steel coming all the way up, at, at going through and bolting through the, the uh, nylon webbing. Uh, they also asked us to get rid of all the snaps and Velcro and ancillary things because they they uh, honestly felt that, look, we work in the sand, Velcro and sand don't go well right. together. So we just simplified everything for them. I like how you guys put the snaps on there too. A lot of knife makers are just putting Velcro. And like, like you were talking about, if, if you're getting out in real world application with this stuff, dirt, crud, everything else is getting in there. Then after a day or two, your Velcro doesn't work anymore. So, and, and they're all stainless steel. Sweet. Now, this is ambidextric. Yes. For right or left carry as well. So they're also putting a ton of quality into these sheaths. You know, you got to understand when you're in special operations, this stuff's got to last. It's not like you can just run down to the sporting goods store and just go buy another knife. It's It's got to make it through that mission. So we're looking really forward to testing all this gear out. So now you had a chance to see a little bit of the thought process that went into the 50-50 survival knife and even the sheath. Most people would think, well, it's just the sheath. But with special operations having to deal with extreme temperature changes, very cold, very hot, and Kydex, the chance of it getting real brittle, that was a major concern. So you can see that a lot of thought, a lot of work went into the construction and the development of this system. So what I'm going to do is over the course of the next few weeks, I'm going to be putting together a video for you folks where we're going to do some extreme testing on this blade. So look for this blade in the next couple weeks. I look forward to reviewing this for First Edge. And folks, I'll see you on the next video. Take care.